morning, guys. Hey, um, I've got some scriptures here this morning that I had a dream on and then woke up. So I'm going to just kind of get them out there and share them with you um, and tell you what the Lord told me to tell you. But it's John 1, 3. I'm sorry, my lighting's a little bit bad. It's early in the morning. I don't wake up my wife. John 1, 3 through 12 and 27 through 32. And then I was waking up, woke up, came out here, and I always ask the Lord, I'm like, well, what do I do now, God? Do I read the scriptures? I didn't even know what they said. Look them up, pray. I just ask for direction. And sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's get the scriptures first, pray over the scriptures. Sometimes it's just pray. So this morning it was just sit down and pray. So I sat down and prayed for a while. Then, but as I was walking to the kitchen, I saw the clock and it said 3.32. And he said, don't forget John 3 also. So it's John 3, John 3, 3 through 12. Those are highlighted. They're really good scriptures, though, the whole chapter. So I'd encourage you to read all of it. But that's what, just what highlighted it. And he said the same thing, John 3, 3 through 12, and 27 through 32. So then I sat down, prayed, um, then I sat down to, yeah, it was 527 when I sat down to start doing this. I had a little bit of technical difficulties because of my computer skills this morning, but so that's why it's just getting out now. But he told me, he said, told me what to call it. Proof is in the pudding. Like me, okay, God, I'm just being obedient. Okay, so, and then he started highlighting some more things to it. And then the Bible, tool that I use, there's always a Bible verse, and this was the verse. For the preaching, verse for the day, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Okay, keep that in mind because I'm going to bring, intertwine that in in a second, but it all has some relevance. But he told me to get this message out because it was a message for today. He said, get it out today before the news hits this morning and this afternoon. So I'm like, okay, I'm, t I'm just in the obedience mode, guys. But <clears throat> that first script, that scripture for the day, I also got in 2015. <clears throat> when we wrote our first book, we got two of them now. And a bunch more coming starting May 1st. The first book was called Visions and Writings of Promise, Hope, and a Future for America. And I was having a lot of visions, not a lot of dreams. Now it's visions and dreams. Mostly dreams now, but but I was, man, my brain was just hurting, guys, from so many of them. You can get a copy of the book, email me. If you want a free copy, I'll send you one. If you can't afford it on Amazon, I've got it also on the email version. I can just email you the what I've got on my computer too. That's totally free. Um, or you can get on Amazon, or if you have a problem paying for it, I'll you know just email me and I'll get you a copy. But I was laying there, my brain hurt from. I was like, man, God, quit, stop. I don't want to see anymore. I'm just man. I was kind of shell-shocked, honestly. And <clears throat> so I went in the room and between writings and what I was doing and with the book, I hadn't published it yet. And I was just laying there trying to rest my brain from all the stuff that the Lord was showing me. <clears throat> and he spoke to me that scripture and he said, go to Corinthians 1.18. And he said, this book will stand on that verse. So that has some very significant meaning to me. Okay, and then let's go back to John 3, 1, 3 through 12, 27 through 32. It's about John the Baptist telling about Christ and his baptism. Okay. The cross. Christ, baptism, 
Okay, and then John 3, 3 through 12, has some real significance to me because about a year ago, a year and a half ago, I was laying on the couch over here in the fireplace, which you can barely see in the corner here, right behind me here. And I came out here because my wife woke me up for some reason and she was asleep, but and then it was the Lord too. But then I came out here and laid down and then I started, and then I got into this dream. And in this dream, I looked at above the fireplace, which there's a picture there now, but it was still there. But in the dream, there was a, it was a cross, a brown cross about two or three feet high dark cross but had light grains in it and all around it was a light a brilliant light and then across it was three four and five and then i woke up i said well lord i know that's some scriptures what are they you know just ask them that's what i'm telling you guys ask them So, I said, what is it? It was John 3, 4, and 5. So here's John 3, 4, and 5. Bear with me, guys, because my lighting, like I said, is not the greatest in here. Jesus answered them, this is 3, and said, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot enter, see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, Water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Therefore, or that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay, guys. The cross, the baptism, Christ, the baptism, water and spirit. Okay, it's very significant to this time that we're living in in this day. This is, yes, this is a pretty good sized storm. I mean, it's look what it's did to the whole world, but there's a storm coming. There's a separation coming, guys. It's going to be time to choose. There's no more, none of this fence riding junk. There's a reason why, and there were some good churches in there too, of course, plenty of them. But there was a lot of, a lot of false religious stuff going on, guys. What, where, what happened to it all? Why did it so easily get shut down? Where's the power? Because a lot of it was just based upon, set, built upon sand. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be the abrasive guy. I'm just, you know, a watchman and telling you guys that was part of my messages anyhow. And others too. We're going to have to choose the cross. We're going to have to choose the true Jesus. The true Christ. The living God. The Son of God. We're going to have to be born again. We're going to be cleansed, washed with the washing of the water, the word. There's an importance to the baptism. If it wasn't that important, why did Jesus have to get baptized? Why did God descend, that the Holy Ghost descend upon him like a dove? Why did God say, this is my son whom I'm well pleased? If it wasn't important, we've taken it out, unfortunately, of the church. And we've taken the spirit out of the quench the Holy Ghost. Instead, it's become a rock and roll show, showboat. Look at who I am. I was a kid, used to watch this, the Johnny Carson show. Here, Johnny. That's how it's been, you know? Pick a name. Why? Why did it? I didn't close them down. Shut them off. Some of them are still, you know, because they got a little bit of money still thinking they can still do the same thing. Not so. But that's not 
not my point. I'm not going to get on that soapbox. My point is, we have to come to the cross and through the cross to be covered under the blood of the Lamb. And that's why the five in the morning prayer is so important, guys. Because I'll walk out my door and I'll go poke my head around the corner and my address is 3108 in my street. Yours is probably different. But you know what? We can come together as a body at five in the morning. You're not going to see me. Probably not. God is. We all come together as a body. Different houses, different places. Not about buildings anymore, guys. I'm not, not, I'm not saying we shouldn't gather. That's not what I'm saying. None of that. I'm not even going there. I'm saying it's time to weep between the porch and the altar. And let's do it at five in the morning, guys. And let's listen to what the Spirit's saying to the church instead of what the world's saying. We've been all, that's why I said the proof's in the pudding. What do you got? Prove it, kind of. You know, I mean, that's what the enemy's telling us to do. He told Jesus to do that. If you're the Son of God, you know, prove it. When he was in the in the wilderness, throw, throw yourself off, to, you know, Took him to the pinnacle, throw yourself off, the angel will catch you, you know, turn the stones into bread. He was hungry. But we'll know him by their fruit. So what's the world seeing of us? By our fruit. Where are all these supposed big superstar Preachers in churches now today hold up. I'm online thinking they yeah, it's surreal, guys. But what are we really doing? It's for all. Whether you were the doorkeeper, or not anymore, but had a million people in your church. Same. Read Matthew 20. But anyhow. It's time to get back to the cross. And who's your source? Should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. How many authors, I'm going to end with this, how many authors do you guys still follow or still know or still read? But the Bible's been around for a long time, guys. Has it not? You know, you might read Socrates or whatever, some of the goofy stuff, you know, maybe you read it in college or whatever, but most people don't remember most of this stuff or they last, it's, fad, it's fads and then, you know, the bestseller on the New York Times list from last year, do you remember it or whatever, you know? No. But his grace is sufficient. His word will not go void. It's the same yesterday, today and forever. So it's time to get that, get a little neology, guys, and get rid of this theology because, guys, that kind of got shut off and washed away, didn't it? Did it not? Let's be real here. Why? Because he wants his body built upon the rock, not upon the sand of this world. And we've made it into some, you know, rock band and event and things that it was never intended to be. There's a lot of different things, but that's part of one of my messages about our idols. We, the church would become an idol, guys, to us. And some of these ministries did too. And so we all have to be careful, especially people in the ministry have to be careful that we don't try to become an idol. Because he's a jealous God. We just have to be about our Father's business. And that's, you know, what I'm telling you right now, it's the cross, Christ and him crucified. The water baptism is not just the water, but it's the cleansing because you have to be born of the spirit. Why does it say repent, baptize in Jesus name? Then you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want to deviate from all these and get our own plans and our own theology in our own way and it didn't say that it did it didn't 
guys, I'm not telling you to listen to me. That's not, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be the YouTube king or anything like that, because then that becomes an idol too. I'm telling you, time to weep between the porch and the altar. That's the beauty of the cross. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. That was God's whole plan. His GPS, God promised his son. God provided his son as a sacrifice so we don't have to quit listening to all this garbage that's out there. I'm not just turning it off. I'm shutting doors. I'm closing things down. I'm battening the hatches for the storm that's about to come because I want direction from God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. And that's what I'm telling you. I'm directing you to that, to the cross, because we can all get it. And that's what he wants for his people. No more of this surreal, unreal stuff. None. Where is it now today? So many of y'all have some pretty cool testimonies. His people, his body, his bride. Let's be that light of the world, guys. Not the light on stage. I mean, I'll end with this. Small, little, but it's still kind of where the rubber meets the road. Why, why in a lot of these buildings and stuff, why was there a stage? Why was there a couple feet above? Why, you know, it was kind of like to set people up. Be a little bit better, holier than, and it's just a weird mentality. Guys, I didn't want us to. Get... Man, we're all children of the King. Every life matters. And whether you choose them or not, is going to be the difference of where you spend eternity. That's pretty serious. Very serious. So let's get to the cross, guys, and go through the cross and be covered in the blood of the Lamb and forget all this nonsense that the world has and the church had. You get, get it right. Let's get it right. Let's get real with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And you're not going to get it from me. You're going to get it in prayer, seeking him. And the prayer is not, hey, God, I need some help from the coronavirus. I need protection. I need this. I need that. And no one's going to be listening. What is the Spirit saying to the church? Time to listen, guys. Not talk. He wants us to listen what the Spirit's saying to the church. So let's do it at five in the morning, guys. There's really an imperative importance to that. I'm just I'm gonna, gonna stay on that theme because that's what he told me to do. So and yeah, those are the scriptures. Let me get this message out. It's a message for today. Hope and encouragement. His grace is sufficient. His mercy endures forever. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is good news, even amongst Seemingly bad news. Why are we even listening to that, guys? Turn it off. I canceled my TV subscription a while back. I'm glad I did now. Last year, actually. You can still see plenty of trash on the internet. You have to kind of weed through it, and, and then it, some of it ends up polluting your mind, and there's all kinds of, and you don't even know what what's real and not, and then you get sucked up into that. That's what the enemy wants. Us to get our, our minds trashed. Jesus wants us to get our minds renewed by the washing of the water of the word, by the spirit, by our, are we abiding in him, connected to the vine, or are we becoming discombobulated and disconnected? Look at him when, Look at what's happened, and you know, who would have thought this three, three months ago, like a bunch of chickens with our heads cut off. 
Sorry to say. So anyhow, we love you guys. But let's get back to the basics, to the simplicity of God's plan, his GPS, God promised his son, the cross, the blood of the lamb. Not all this hogwash. Love you guys. Um, just, just love you guys. You know, you can comment, email me if you want to get a hold of me. You can email me at Jesus is Alive in America, gmail dot com. Um, tune in with us. Just, you know, love you guys. See ya. Find the red button.